friends of family and strangers and my family used to rape me. Um, make me uh, abort the babies I had. It would be hard to imagine more misery and suffering than what Teresa says she's had to endure. And us kids would be made to do things with the adults and the animals and then a, a sacrifice would happen. The sacrifice? Uh, were these animal sacrifices? Animals and um, people. On what scale do you think this was happening? Enormous. Far beyond what we've ever heard of here before. Teresa's mother, Bridget. You're talking about mass murder? Yes. On a scale that this country's never heard of before. Like the old people's homes now. I mean, a... For the first time, Teresa is learning what it's like to live with love instead of fear. Pretty though. In this quiet English village, with the help of her mother, she's slowly repairing her broken life. Teresa is now 15, but at the age of two, she was left in the care of this woman, the grandma she called Nan. And that, she says, is when a torment started. Who was the leader? Who was, uh, who was the boss of the gang, of the cult? At home, it was my Nan. Your Nan uh, made you have sex with animals? Yeah. Um, like goats and donkeys. The story of Teresa is a story almost too horrible to recount. A case of child abuse that goes well beyond the kind of things we normally associate with the abuse of children. In 27 years of reporting, it has to be one of the most painful stories I have ever had to tell. How many men or how many people would have sex with you? Well, at one time. Yes. About everyone who was there, which must have been about 20, you know, from 10 to 20 people. If it was a a big ceremony, it used to be 30. What would your grandma be doing uh, when these men were forcing themselves on you? Usually laughing. Or smiling. Or having sex with another man. Or other men. A chronicle of debauchery and depravity so horrific it's hard to believe. You have to ask yourself could Teresa be just making it up? No. I know what's true and what's not. No, I know what I saw. Children don't make up elaborate lies that this would have to be if it was a lie, which I, I know it is not. It isn't. This couldn't be a terrible dream, a nightmare that you're reliving. No, it's no dream, it's a nightmare, but it's, it's not one you can wake up from, it's there all the time. This really happened, you're quite sure of that? Yeah. The police don't think Teresa made up a story. Some of the cult members are to stand trial. Five men have been charged with rape. As for Nan, the grandmother, She's 61 and lives in this council flat in South London. She's charged on seven counts of aiding and abetting rape and two counts of performing abortions on Teresa. If you're finding this hard to believe, so did I at first. But then there are the medical reports, evidence of sustained sexual abuse. And there's this, a statement prepared for 60 minutes by Teresa's psychiatrist. It says, in my opinion, Teresa's account is not the product of a psychotic illness, nor the figment of a fertile imagination. I believe her to be telling the truth. I know what's true and what's not. We also took Teresa's story to this saying. man, therapist Ray Wire. But, you know, he reads a transcript of our interview and listens to her voice. It's no dream. 
Few people, if any, in Britain have counselled as many victims of satanic abuse or Satanists themselves as Ray Wire has. If there is an expert on satanic cults, it would have to be him. Do you believe Teresa's story? I believe Teresa's story. It's exactly the same story as I've heard from men who says they've done it. You've dealt with other cases like hers? Yes. 21 cases like hers, he says, in the past two years alone. Themes like they were put in boxes with spiders and worms, where they were trapped in fear, where there was a high use of excrement and urine, where there was talk of human sacrifice. Both Take just one of those rituals, putting children in boxes with spiders and worms. Now, listen to what Teresa told her mother. And they had a coffin-like box that children were put in with spiders and snakes and the lid shut and left in there, I would have come out deranged. I could not have coped with that mentally at all. You have evidence to back up stories like Teresa's, that this yes. is really happening? Well, we have that age of child, six, five and four, giving information that ties up with Teresa. How do those children know? How do those children able to describe rituals, to talk about ceremonies, to talk about sacrificing animals? How do those children know? Nightmares, imagining it? You can't imagine those things at, at three and four years old. And you also don't have the evidence of anal sex abuse and oral sex abuse and all that other abuse that clearly those children have experienced and endured. During these ceremonies, was Satan, the devil, ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Um, what did they say about the devil, about Lucifer? That um, killing the people made him happy. Sacrifices to please the devil. According to Teresa, the worst rituals took place at a house somewhere in the country. It was big, you know, expensive. From the front, it looked like a castle. You know, it had a long drive and big double wooden doors. Do you think they were rich people then? Very rich. Now, where was this big house somewhere in the country? Teresa says she can't take the police there because the Satanists made sure she'd never know how to find it. Teresa was always drugged, or on a couple of occasions she says she was knocked out, um, so that she never fully knew the route. There was a tramp who was brought in once, you know, and he was killed. And he was cut from his throat down to his stomach, and that I ate him, or bits of him. They killed a man at a ceremony? Yeah. In front of you? Yeah, in front of all of, the, all of us. Did the tramp, did this man uh, fight back? No, I think he was, you know, drunk or something. He seemed really dopey. He was laughing a lot when he was brought in. Mm. He started screaming when they began to cut, but after a while, you know, he died. I'd seen a few killings before then, although I wasn't used to it, it you know, that was the worst one. I really don't know what I thought. I suppose I thought, thank God it's not me. Let me get this right now. Uh, are you saying that you saw more than one person killed in that house? Yeah. I've seen um, loads of babies killed there, just newborn babies, or aborted ones which were only small. You know, four-year-olds. Any age, really. Did they ever say they might kill you? Let me get this right now. Uh, are you saying that you saw more than one person killed in that house? Yeah. 
I've seen um, loads of babies killed there, just newborn babies or aborted ones which were only small, you know, four year olds, any age really. Did they ever say they might kill you? Uh, they threatened to kill my little girl who, when I left, was still at the house. A friend? Huh? What little girl? My little girl, Alex. She's about four now. You mean you had a child? Yeah. How old were you when you had that child? Eleven. Motherhood at the age of 11. But from what Teresa told her mother, it wasn't the only pregnancy. We think um, about seven or eight times. It's hard to say. Um, it was constantly happening from the time she was capable of being pregnant. What happened to the pregnancies, to the babies? Um, they were aborted by my nan or by one of the doctors at the house. There were doctors there at that house? Yeah, there was um, two, I think. Yeah, and, the, and a nurse. What would happen uh, to the fetuses, the unborn babies? They used to be taken away most of the time. And one time, the baby was taken out of me and then killed in front of me because it was still alive. And then, uh, what would happen? Well, after they killed it, they would eat it. Well, we were also made to eat it. You were made to eat your own fetus? Yeah. Who made you do this? My nan. You'd think the one person in the world you could leave a little girl with would be Grandma. Someone to give her love and protect her from harm. Yet, when Teresa was left to live with her grandmother, they might as well have handed her to the devil himself. Grandmothers, I mean, the vision it, it conjures up for, you know, a sweet old lady with grey hair, rosy cheeks, holding her arms out to love her grandchildren. And it was exactly the reverse. But why was Teresa living with Nan in the first place and not with her mother? Well, when uh, my first marriage broke up, um, I, I took the children with me and couldn't cope. So I gave them to their father, who in turn moved to his mother's. And to Nan's he, place? Yeah. And when he left the Nan's place, um, he left the children there. How do you feel now towards her grandma? and the other people who, who did all those things to your daughter? Uh, they disgust me. They are the worst form of life this earth has had the misfortune to create. Uh, vile. Did you ever try to, to run away? You must have, been, must have been frightened. A couple of times I did, but my uncle, he caught me and brought me back. Going to the police? Did that occur to you? No. No. I thought it was normal, you know, even though I didn't like it. You know, I'm, oh. I mean, you don't like to eat greens, but, you, you know, somehow, you, you know, you thought, I thought it was just her being called to be kind or something like that. She said to me it was something that everybody did, she thought, you know. Like, you don't like going to school or the dentist. You don't like going to the black masses. It was never any different. I didn't have nothing to compare it to. All part of life, Teresa thought. Even a miscarriage one day at school. Yeah, I asked the teacher if I could go to the toilet. And she allowed me out. I went to the toilet and... Um, the baby was in my knickers. 
I thought it was dead, but it, it wasn't. It was still moving. And yet no one at school knew? No. Saw anything? No. Or if they did, they didn't say. No, she was treated for a high temperature, a fever, nothing more. What did she do with the baby? She kept her for a while because she was frightened that they'd use the child as part of the rituals. So uh, she turned the pencil case into a little coffin. Apparently uh, she put roses in to make her smell sweet, put a letter with her, pictures of herself and her brother, a picture of me. As we said earlier, the police have already charged some members of the cult and we know they're also investigating Teresa's accounts of those ritual killings. If there were as many as she told us, then the Satanists had a problem. How did they get rid of the bodies? They had um, a tub, you know, pretty big, I don't know. A very big tub and they used to put the bodies and bones in there. And it used to go like, you know, fizzy in it and then there was nothing left or well, there didn't seem to be but when they cleared it out there used to be a sludge at the bottom Teresa's story her account doesn't really surprise you it doesn't surprise me in the light of uh, satanic abuse no do you get frustrated with people who just won't accept that these things do happen yes because I, I've worked with murderers in prisons for years not that long ago, a boy was found in a forest in southern England without a head. We have no doubts that men can do that. And yet when we start talking about men within Satanism who actually believe in evil and it's the right to express evil, we suddenly have a, a, a doubt. As I was leaving Teresa's place, she handed me this note. It's addressed to the film crew. She says, thanks for bothering to help kids like me. I hope it helps. On the other side, there's a poem Teresa made up while she was staying at Nan's place. She calls it, Nothing Left. Nothing left. I would scream, but there is no voice left. I would cry, but there are no tears left. I'd fight, but there is no strength left. That was just part of our investigation of Satanism in Britain. We're also gathering evidence about the activities of such cults here in Australia. Things with the adults and the animals, and then a, a sacrifice would happen. The sacrifice? Uh, were these animal sacrifices? Animals and um, people. On what scale do you think this was happening? Enormous, far beyond what we've ever heard of here before. Teresa's mother, Bridget. You're talking about mass murder? Yes, on a scale that this country's never heard of before. Like the old people's homes. In 27 years of reporting, it has to be one of the most painful stories I have ever had to tell. How many men or how many people would have sex with you? What, at one time? Yes. About everyone who was there, which must have been about 20, you know, from 10 to 20 people. If it was a, a big ceremony, it used to be 30. What would your grandma be doing uh, when these men were forcing the... Who was the boss of the gang, of the cult? At home, it was my nan. Your nan uh, made you have sex with animals? Yeah, um, like goats and donkeys. The story of Teresa is a story almost too horrible to recount. A case of child abuse that goes well beyond the kind of things we normally associate with the abuse of children. Friends of family and strangers and my family used to rape me, um, make me uh, abort the babies I had. 
it would be hard to imagine more misery and suffering than what Teresa says she's had to endure. Then us kids would be made to do. For the first time, Teresa is learning what it's like to live with love instead of fear. In this quiet English village, with the help of her mother, she's slowly repairing her broken life. Teresa is now 15, but at the age of two, she was left in the care of this woman, the grandma she called Nan. And that, she says, is when a torment started. Who was the leader? Who was... Uh...